Hello, and welcome to the Art of Assessment with Botox Cosmetic, on a Botulinum Toxin A. Today we'll be covering the Art of Assessment to effectively evaluate the upper face muscular and functional anatomy. Different line patterns to observe and guide your treatment patterns, and clinical pearls for patient assessment. Now, let's focus on using the Art of Assessment to effectively evaluate the anatomy of the upper face. A thorough patient assessment helps establish your expertise as an aesthetic specialist with patients. It also helps you determine the appropriate candidates for Botox Cosmetic. Interrelated muscles make it important to assess the entire upper face with every appropriate patient. Assess every patient in all three indicated areas every single time. Understanding the relevant anatomy is important for achieving desired outcomes such as variability between individuals in muscle patterns, such as different frontalis muscle patterns. Consider the functional relationship of the frontalis muscle, an elevator, to the other upper facial muscles, depressors, as this interaction helps guide the shape and positioning of the eyebrow. In most cases, treatment in more than one area may be recommended because treating one area in isolation could adversely affect another area. For example, treating forehead lines without treating glabellar lines may increase the risk of brow ptosis. The art of assessment can help you assess all three areas for which Botox Cosmetic is FDA approved. Our patient here is Janelle. Let's take a look at Janelle's expressions. Can you lift and lower your eyebrows for me? and relax. One more time. Lift and relax. Can you frown and or squint for us? And relax. One more time. Frown and relax. Can you tilt your head down, so lean forward just ever so slightly, and just elevate your eyelids, just looking up with your eyes. And relax. And one more time, just up with your eyes. And relax. This lets us look for important characteristics that can impact my treatment approach. There are generally three types of forehead lines, full forehead lines, V-shaped forehead lines, and central forehead lines. Full forehead lines are the most common pattern and appear in 45% of patients. So what I see with Janelle is that actually she recruits a little bit more laterally in an oblique direction. So what that leads me to believe is that she doesn't have as much recruitment in the upper medial aspect of the frontalis. So I would call this a V-shaped pattern of frontalis contraction. I think a lot of people are trained to think that the frontalis is just one wide sheet of a muscle, where in reality it's usually two different sheets um, and there's a variety of different patterns. There are four glabellar line patterns seen most often among patients. U-shaped pattern, V-shaped pattern, converging arrow pattern, and the omega pattern. The two most common patterns are the U and the V shapes. The U-shaped pattern is seen in approximately 32% of patients, and V-shaped pattern is seen in approximately 30% of patients. In Janelle, you can ever so slightly see a hint of an omega pattern. There's something very unique about Janelle's frown pattern, which I really, actually it's one of my favorite things to talk about. <laughs> and what's happening anatomically here is that we have the depressor activity of the procerus pulling down, but at the same time, the frontalis is recruiting and pulling up. And at a certain point, there's an interdigitation between that frontalis and procerus muscle. And when she goes to frown, that inadvertent elevation happens just at the end of her activity which I think is so interesting. Next, we'd like to ask Janelle to smile widely and then look at her left and right profile. So I'm gonna have you turn just this way. Big smile for us and relax. And then come back towards me. Big smile for us and relax. Two types of patterns are found in lateral canthal lines, full fan pattern and lower fan pattern. Full fan lines are the most common pattern and present in 47% of patients. And what I notice with Janelle is that she really only recruits in the lower third. So what I would describe that as is the lower fan pattern. She doesn't tend to pull as dramatically from the upper aspect of the obicularis on squeezing or squinting her eyes. 
Our patient here is Darius. Let's take a look at Darius's expressions. Can you lift and lower your brows for me? And relax. One more time. And relax. Can you frown very angrily? Pull your brows together. And relax. One more time. And frown. Great. Can you take your head and just tilt it down ever so slightly and just look up with your eyes and relax? And one more time, just the eyes. Great. This lets us look for important characteristics that can impact my treatment approach. There are generally three types of forehead lines. Full forehead lines, V-shaped forehead lines, and central forehead lines. Go ahead and raise your brows for me, Darius. Here you can see that Darius has a more central forehead pattern. There are four glabellar line patterns seen most often among patients. U-shaped pattern, V-shaped pattern, converging arrow pattern, and the omega pattern. The two most common patterns are the U and V shapes. In Darius, go ahead and frown for us, Darius. You can see that he has the U-shaped pattern. So in Darius' case, it might be interesting to mention just his brow positioning. And in the majority of males, we tend to see a lower and flatter brow, which tends to align very well with the V pattern for our glabellar contraction. In Darius' case, we mentioned that he had more of a U pattern, which is more common typically in women, but because he has a little bit more of an elevated and arched brow. And his eyebrow hairs are actually in line with his orbital rim and actually a little bit higher than his orbital rim laterally, which is not typical of a male face. So it's really important to assess each face individually and not um, paint each patient with a broad paintbrush stroke. So he has quite strong glabellar muscles and what I notice is that his corrugators in particular are quite hypertrophic and they pull together quite dramatically. There's, it's definitely, his right side is definitely more hypertrophic and more active than the left side. Next we'd like to ask Darius to smile widely and then I look at their left and right profile. Go ahead and smile for me. Big smile, and then come back towards me this way, and big smile. Two types of patterns are found in lateral canthal lines, full fan pattern and lower fan pattern. Darius has, go ahead and smile one more time for me, big smile, the full fan pattern in his lateral canthal lines. Our patient today is Kala. Let's take a look at Kala's expressions. Can you lift your brows for us? Okay, and relax. And I'll have you lift it one more time. And relax. I usually ask patients to lift their brows a few times because sometimes, like Kala, they will only recruit laterally, and then when I ask them to do it a few more times, they'll recruit medially as well. Now, can I have you look, face your head down, position your head down, and look up with your eyes. Okay, next I'll have you make an angry face and relax. Make an angry face again and relax. Give me a big smile and relax. One more time, give me a big smile and relax. And one last thing, can I have you close your eyes as tight as you can? And relax and close your eyes as tight as you can and relax. Okay, good. This lets us look for important characteristics that can impact my treatment approach. There are generally three types of forehead lines. Full forehead lines, V-shaped forehead lines, and central forehead lines. Here you see that Kala has a full forehead line pattern. Go ahead and raise your brows and keep them there for me. You can see the line extending all the way from one side to the other. Go ahead and keep them raised for me. So she has a full forehead line pattern. Go ahead and look down and look up with your eyes. She's really recruiting her brows to help her lift. And that's because if you look at her straight on, her brows are pretty low set. And it's really important to assess the brows, not just in terms of where the eyebrow hairs are, because depending on uh, plucking or waxing patterns, the eyebrow hairs may be way above the true brow margin. So in Kala's case, 
her her true brow is actually a lot lower than where her eyebrows want to be. And so oftentimes I keep my hand on top of the forehead to force the patient to relax the brow. And you can really see that her brow position is much lower than where she um, initially presented. There are four glabellar line patterns seen most often among patients. The U-shaped pattern, V-shaped pattern, converging arrow pattern, and the omega pattern. The two most common patterns are the U and V shapes. In Kala, you can see that she has a U-shaped pattern. Go ahead and make an angry face. You can see that she has a U-shaped pattern to her glabella. Next, we'd like to ask Kala to smile widely, then look at her left and right profiles. So go ahead and smile for me. Good, and I'm going to turn your face this way. Smile widely. Good, and to this side, smile widely again and relax. Two types of patterns are found in lateral canthal lines, full fan pattern and lower fan pattern. Kala has a lower fan pattern. We'd also like to mention that we begin patient assessment by starting the conversation with patients and being aware of the following. First, be sure to talk about patients' top concerns. Second, know the importance of your recommendation. Third, it's helpful to clarify that only Botox Cosmetic is FDA approved for treatment in three areas. Fourth, we explain to the patient that we recommend Botox Cosmetic treatment of three areas with 64 units at least three times per year. Last, we like to address the question of repeat treatments. I educate the patient about the look of three. A Botox Cosmetic treatment of three areas with 64 units at least three times per year. The safety and effectiveness of receiving Botox Cosmetic more often than every three months has not been studied. Since the effect is temporary, you'll need to be consistent with scheduling assessments and be sure to keep up with appointments. Each time you conduct an assessment is another opportunity for the patient to receive Botox Cosmetic. This concludes the presentation on the art of assessment with Botox Cosmetic. To summarize, interrelated muscles make it important to assess the entire upper face with every appropriate patient. Use the art of assessment to assess all three areas for which Botox Cosmetic is FDA approved. Emphasize the look of three, a Botox Cosmetic treatment of three areas with 64 units at least three times per year Identify individual patient line patterns during assessment so you can individualize treatment to their anatomy. Let 